Hey, laser people. This is CL2 Aaron, and uh, I'm one year into laser machines, and got a quick review today. Yeah, we want to talk about um, American Photon X lenses versus your stock lens, and I kind of dispel some of the things that I found out um, about these lenses and about your stock lens and some misconceptions that people may have about what it is they are and what they can do. All right, let's start off with um, what comes with your machine. You probably have something like this, which is your typical stock setup, um, auto focus pen type thing. Probably comes with a two inch lens install like this one did. Two inch lenses are great. They got a um, decent amount of reach and you could uh, cut a lot of things with them. It's pretty much your all around go-to lens. It engraves pretty well leaves a lot of detail it cuts pretty good um, marks great uh, it's pretty much your stock thing and the way you would typically focus one of those lenses is what uh, a tool like this usually comes included with your machine i have a 130 watt chinese machine and uh, it came with that it's a pretty good machine but i pretty much swapped out most of all the parts and upgraded a lot of things you know the air assist um, lighting all of that pretty much has been upgraded the power supply um, anything but um, to get the most out of your machine I definitely recommend these American Photonics lenses what makes these so great and desirable is uh, a lot of people end up really confused about is my laser in focus um, am I setting my focus properly did I do my ramp test properly and these pretty much eliminate the need to do a ramp test or takes all the guesswork out of running your machine. And it comes with this nice reverse alignment tool if you buy the whole kit. I bought the whole four piece kit. Um, I do have a couple gripes with these lenses, but nothing that's not easily solved besides one of the problems and we'll get there a little later. But we'll start off by saying that all of these lenses you notice all of the top tubes are the exact same size from your 1.5 inch lens, your 2 inch lens, your 2.5 inch, and your 4. All of the top ones are exactly the same. And what you'll notice what's different is your bottom tube that your air runs through. That's because they set these to all focus at the same exact distance which is 10.6 millimeters from what the website says uh, i created me a tool that's 10.5 millimeters i meant to do 10.6 but um it's 10.5 but it works really well as well and i just kind of offset it a little bit with a little gap to get it out of there it comes with this battery and you stick that under there and uh, focus your material like that it takes all the guessing out this using this battery is fine but i just wanted something a little more Fancy, so I cut me an acrylic block in uh, 10.5, which you probably want to set cut it at 10.6. It's like shaving hairs at 10.5 to 10.6, but it does make a slight difference. Now, your um, stock lens, my stock lens has outperformed these in some instances, and in other instances, the American Photonics lens have outperformed these. Now, when you compare lens to lens, you got your two inch lenses this is the two two inch lens um, and comparing it with another two inch lens the results are very similar you're not going to notice some night and day difference what you are going to notice though is that these focus a lot closer to the material than your stock lens would and that's what kind of gives it that extra boost is you know if you're running stock air these focus a lot closer to the material so you're getting more air down through the material to push out that debris and everything even running the stock air what i do recommend though if you're running the stock machine you have this autofocus pin just go ahead and get rid of that that's why mine is cut you don't need it um it's a liability waiting to happen blah 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 whatever you know some people love them some people swear by them but it's a liability you're eventually you're going to drive your head into your um honeycomb or your knife bed and you're gonna have a bad day, you're gonna be upset, blah, blah, whatever. But, you know, your choice, your machine, do what you want. Just kind of my suggestion on that one. Now, back to the American Photonics lenses. 
with them focusing all at the same distance takes the guesswork out. If you get rid of that autofocus pin and the side mounted red dot laser and use a beam combiner or um, you know, some other form of aligning, you know, knowing where your head is on the material, I do recommend a beam combiner for sure. But if you do that, these are a breeze to switch between going to really fine engravings to your all around lens, you know, to your decent engravings and really good cutting depth to your serious cutting depth, which is on this four inch lens. This thing has some serious reach. Um, it will burn things. This and the 2.5 will reach all the way down in my 100 watt 30 bed and burn materials that's under the bed and possibly start a fire. So you do want to keep an eye out when you jump up to those bigger size lenses on things like that. Um, it also comes with this reverse alignment tool. The reverse alignment tool is pretty much useless to me. It does help me center my third mirror because if you stick it in there and shooting up, when it hits that mirror, it's only going to hit in the center of mirror three. And then you can align your other beam exactly to the center. So that's kind of like a really good eye gauge for that. But other than that, that thing is pretty much useless. Um, it's really hard to do a reverse alignment versus just a traditional alignment which I have a very nice video on alignment. If you um, want to check that out, I'll drop a link or a plug somewhere up here. Um, we'll do that. And uh, I'll probably be making another one because I didn't actually show me doing an alignment, but I gave you the rundown of why you can't get your alignment dialed in, which, which is one of the drawbacks of the American Photonics lenses, but it's also really not a drawback. It's more so of a plus. If you don't have your alignment spot on, then these aren't going to be for you. If you don't know how to do an alignment, it's really not the lens for you. But if you know how to do an alignment and get your alignment spot on, you're going to have a really good time with these lenses. You're going to have a really easy time swapping between them because if you move it, no matter where you stick this top part of the tube, if you move it up and down within the, um, your thing, as long as your machine is aligned, you won't run into any issues and you can literally focus just like that by loosening up your little side brass knob and adjusting it to the 10.5 and keeping it going or you could adjust your bed either one works um i definitely recommend learning how to do an alignment if you're going to get these lenses because they have really low tolerance if you look down the hole you can see how much wider this two inch stock lens is versus how much wider the hole for this is um it's really 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 tight so if you don't get it dead down the center that beam is going to clip and you're going to lose power but if you get it dead down the center you're going to have a great day and there's nothing like a great day which that wouldn't really be a negative thing that they force you to have good alignment using these lenses because you're going to run through burn up lenses and you're going to crack them a lot faster if it's not going directly down the center a lot of things are going to go left if you don't have good alignment but um, back to the lenses once again your four inch I don't really find this necessary in most cases the only time that I found have found this necessary is if um, the material is really hard and I want to take out a lot so I make sure I get a clean cut all the way through because you do get a much bigger beam when you're using this but you have to use more power to drive it um, I've been able to cut up to half inch material with this 1.5 inch lens, which is something that's supposed to be impossible on a CO2 laser with a 1.5 inch lens. Everywhere you look online, they will tell you that you can't do that. I've been able to cut it not only at 12 millimeters a second, but half inch plywood, which is amazing, you know. This thing, if you align your machine properly, you can do some amazing things with these lenses. And um, I do have a 130 watt machine though, so that kind of makes a difference. But um, I digress. Half inch, 12 millimeters a second is a big deal. You get a lot more energy density on the smaller lenses, so they are going to cut better than, than when you're stepping up. But, you know, most information online is going to tell you that they're. Um, bigger lenses cut better. Now, biggest lenses, bigger lenses cut deeper, but you have to push them a lot harder to get them to cut this 
same, you know, with the same energy density because it spreads out over a bigger beam. Um, so my two inch lens does cut better than my 2.5, but my 2.5 cuts deeper. But my 2.5 inch cuts really, really well. It's not something that you just notice, but once you step up to the four inch, you will notice the drop off in power and energy density, and you will have to crank it a little higher to get through material, but you can get deeper because that beam focuses, uh, has a deeper focal depth than that. Um, and my main gripe with these is they're kind of really hard to clean, like because the lenses come glued in, you can't really get into this back size tube when certain debris gets in there and stuff. Of course, I have the long Q-tips from uh, Amazon or whatever, which those work fairly well, and I don't have to clean these often because I have good air extraction, but if you got stuff just blowing all over the place, it's gonna be a bad day when it comes time to clean these. Um, and that's kinda it, man. I definitely recommend these. Um, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I'm not being paid. They didn't send me these for free. Uh, these are definitely my own lenses, personal lenses, and just wanted to share that with you guys and kind of shed some light on what these are and why you would actually want them. Because a lot of people hype these up, but they don't really understand that you're not going to necessarily get better, you know, a night and day difference between your stock two inch lens and an American Photonics two inch lens. You're not going to magically see it doing something that your stock lens can't do. A two inch lens is a two inch lens. And even though these are cheap Chinese lasers and the replacement lenses you may buy may be cheap, they do have a certain tolerance that they make in these factories. They're not just pumping out complete crap. You know, so if you buy a two inch lens and this one focuses at um, 18 millimeters, you're not gonna go to another two inch lens that focuses at 25 millimeters. That's just not how that works. Um, it's physically not how the physics of optics work. If it's a two inch lens, a true two inch lens is gonna focus about the same depth as the other one. Like if I was to take this off and put this lens exactly to where the bottom of the other lens were, you'll notice they focus in pretty much the same exact place. Um, and I believe they're almost the same size if you were to put them side by side to where that bottom, the bottom of this lens is to the bottom of that lens, pretty much exactly the same. So that's what I said, they're not just pumping out crap because these are cheap Chinese machines or, um, you know, American Photonics lenses is a better company, which they are a great company for sure. I'm not down them at all, but there is no night and day difference between two inch to two inch or four inch to four inch or 2.5 to 2.5. The difference comes in that you know that these are factory set in this tube to focus 10.5 millimeters away, which takes the guesswork out. If you're not getting good results with your stock lens, you probably aren't focused properly. So, you know, check into that or your maybe your um, your inside cap, your washer may not be on right or something similar to that nature. Maybe you didn't twist the, the tube all the way down before you focused or something. But if you're not getting the same similar results number to number, then you're definitely doing something wrong or something's out of whack. So that would be something to check into. But either way, these are definitely worth the price and definitely worth upgrading to if you get rid of this thing it makes swapping them just as easy as sticking it in there and focusing it take it out i want to go to fine engravings i stick it in there focus it i want to go to some deeper cuts stick it in there and i focus it yeah so um yeah you really can't lose with these and that's all i got you know thanks for watching if you found this video helpful be sure to like subscribe comment if you got any questions um, you know, if you think anything I said was bogus or anything like that, drop it down in the comments, man. Let me know. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Uh, thanks for watching.